Hey, this is Madison with Portrait Displays. In today's tutorial, we'll show you how to do an SDR calibration on Panasonic's 2019 GZ2000 OLED TV. Our technical evangelist, Tyler Pruitt, will walk you through the calibration process using Portrait's Calman Home for Panasonic color calibration software. He will also be using the built-in Calman Pattern Gen to generate the test patterns that get shown on the TV and Portrait's C6 HDR2000 colorimeter to analyze them. There are three things you need to calibrate a TV. Calibration software, a meter to read the color patterns on the screen, and a pattern generator to put the color patterns on the screen. The patterns that are generated are just rectangles sent to the screen that have a specific color value. During the calibration process, Calman tells the pattern generator to send a specific color to the screen. The meter reads the color and reports back to Calman. Calman knows the value of the color that was sent and compares it with the value read by the meter. Then Calman makes adjustments to the TV so the two values match. Take it away, Tyler. Thanks. Hey, this is Tyler, technical evangelist for portrait displays. We're going to get right to it. So I'm going to open the Panasonic AutoCal workflow. And we're going to be calibrating a Panasonic GZ2000 OLED television. For SDR mode in this video, we'll be doing another video for HDR. So I have this configured, and I'm going to hit Next. Now this is where we're going to connect our hardware. Um, we're going to connect our meter, which is the portrait. C6 HDR2000. So I'm going to go up here and click Find Meter. Okay, and now I'm going to go down here and select this meter mode. If you're using an i1 Display Pro, we recommend using the RAW XYZ mode for this television. Okay, next is our pattern generator. In this case, the Panasonic GZ2000 has a built-in test pattern generator. It's called Calman Pattern Gen. So we're gonna say find source. Now on the TV, there's a menu item under picture menu called lock settings. We're going to click that and then enter the letter I085 on the remote which will bring up our lock settings. And now we wanna to go to ISF CCC network setting. Now, before you do this, you should probably go into the TV's menu and note what its IP address is because we're going to need that right here. So on the TV, we can go ISF CCC network and it will say waiting for connection on the screen. Now we're going to go to Panasonic. GZ, enter the IP address, which hit connect. And you will see the screen go gray, full screen gray. Now, make sure you have a video input going into the HDMI input of the TV during this calibration process. Okay, so I'm going to. I usually recommend changing this to power 2.4 for a night viewing mode or power 2.2 for a day mode. Okay, hit enter. Okay, now we're going to go on to the next step. Now we're going to do our pre-calibration measurements, but first we need to make sure the Panasonic built-in pattern generator, Calman Pattern Gen, is configured correctly. 
So since we're doing SDR, we want the EOTF to be SDR. We want color space to be 709. And we want window size to be 10%. Okay, now we can do our pre-calibration measurements. So we're gonna go down here and click the read series button. And this is going to measure the grayscale and the color gamut. Okay, now we're going to go to the next page. Where we're going to connect to the TV. So now we're going to click the button that says find Panasonic TV. Select which model. So in this case, 2019 GZ series. Enter the IP address again. Hit connect. You don't have to do anything on the TV for this second step. You only have to go into that lock menu when you're first connecting to the pattern generator. Okay, so now we want to change the gamma to whatever our target is. So if we're this is we're doing an, a reference night mode, we're setting it to, it to 2.4. For day mode, you'd want to set it to 2.2. Color gamut 709, that's for SDR. Okay, so now we're going to do a full reset. Should have changed this app after doing the full reset. Okay, so we're good to go. Now we're going to set our peak luminance. So in this case, we're going to be going for 100 nits or candelas per meter square. We're going to click this button. It will do a continuous reading. And we can either click right here and enter a numerical value, or we can use the plus minus here. So it looks like we're at 200, so I'm going to try 30. Okay, we're at 112. I On these panels, I usually make it about 105 before I do any calibration. So then after calibration, it will be about 100. Okay, now we're going to hit the stop button. And now we've set our peak luminance, so we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, now we're going to run our auto cal of the two point white balance. So we're going to go down here and hit the auto cal button. Okay. The two point white balance auto cal is complete. So we're going to go to the next step. Now, before we run the 12 point multi point grayscale, I've found for the best shadow detail results that I'm now recommending people change the delta E formula to DEITP for auto cal. So now that I've done that, I can hit our auto cal button, make sure this is 12 SDR, and hit OK. Now we're going to go on to the next step. Now it's time to auto cal the color gamut. So we're going to hit our auto cal button again, then hit OK. OK, our color gamut auto cal is complete. On to the next step. Now we can validate what our peak brightness is. So I'm going to hit the read series. This is also going to check if we have any clipping happening in the super white values.
Okay, now be aware that this is for the 255 level. So if we want to compare that to our luminance, when we set the peak luminance earlier, we need to click on the 100 patch here. So we're at 97 here. So if we go up one and then do a single reading again, now we're at 103. I'd probably leave it slightly under than slightly over. So I'm going to leave it back where it was. You can click these to bring up the brightness and contrast patterns. On to the next page. Now here's our validation step. So we're going to hit our read series button again. Okay, now we've done our post calibration measurements. The next step is to compare the before and after results. So this shows our before and after, including our average and max delta E's. So now we can save the data or we could take a screenshot of the results and post on our favorite online forum to show off our calibration results. So thank you very much for watching. Back to Madison. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.